the TLB12 Extreme from Thermalright. This fan goes What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. Now before I get into this overview, just to have full disclosure, Thermalright did send me over this fan so that I could test and review. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you end up liking this video, please hit that like button. And if you really like the video, please hit that subscribe button because it does help out a lot. Now this does bring me to my next point. I just opened up a Patreon account because not all manufacturers are as nice as Thermalright and don't actually send me review samples. So those review samples have been coming out of my pocket for the past two years. And it's getting to the point that I'm not really able to buy anything outside of what's being sent to me, which is very much limiting what I can actually review. I'm getting to the point where I need to actually buy more stuff and test more stuff and do more stuff. And that stuff costs money. So I'm hoping some of you can actually step up and help me out and become a Patreon member because that would be fantastic. Okay, so that's it for the housekeeping. So I'm going to start off with a very quick overview of Thermalright's B series. There is the B12, which is black. There is the B12 white, which is white. Both of these fans have a rated max RPM of 2150. Then there is the B12 Extreme, which comes in only black and has a rated RPM of 3150. There is also the B14, which is gray. There is the B14W which is white. Both have a rated RPM of 1500. And there's the B14 Extreme, which comes in only black and has a rated RPM of 2000. Now the fan I have here is the B12 Extreme, or Extreme, I think is the way it's supposed to be pronounced, but it's not spelt that way. It has a max rated RPM of 3150. It has nine blades. It has a dual ball bearing bearing. It does have a PWM 4-pin connector. It has a 6-year manufacturer warranty. And as I said before, it comes in only black. And you can pick these up for 20 USD on Amazon.com. The B12 Extreme does come with some extra red and white rubber corner pieces and a Y cable. Now before getting to the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear. All this testing is based off a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you're going to get, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect from this fan. Okay, starting off with the PWM range. At 100% PWM, the B12 Extreme had an RPM of 2160-ish. And at 0% PWM, this B12 Extreme had an RPM of 450-ish. So this fan does have a very good RPM range, like 2800 RPM range, which is pretty insane. Now moving on to my standardized testing. If you have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. I'll have a card along the top and I'll also have it linked down in the description. Starting with the DBA and RPM testing. At 4 volts, the B12 Extreme had a DBA of 32.4 with an RPM of 1180. At 6 volts, it had a sound level of 35.6 dBA and an RPM of 1760. At 8 volts, the dBA went up to 41.5 and had an RPM of 2295. At 10 volts, the sound level went up to 47.5 dBA and the RPM went up to 2745. And finally, at 12 volts, the DBA was 51.9, with the RPM being 3150. So yes, 51.9 DBA. Okay, the sound recordings at each of these voltages, but I'll start off with the ambient room sound for reference. Now onto the airflow testing. I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 238. 
With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 220, and with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 100. Jumping up to 12 volts to save some time. With no obstructions, the FPM was 735. Then with the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 695. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 410, which was literally off the charts. I had to rescale the chart for this fan. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. At four volts, it had a temperature of 77.6 C. At six volts, it had a temperature of 74.9 C. At eight volts, it had a temperature of 73.4 C. And at 10 volts, it had a temperature of 72.6 C. And then at 12 volts, it had a temperature of 72 C. Okay, I'll be comparing the Thermalrite B12 Extreme to the Arctic P12 PWM PST the Noctua NF F12 PWM, and Thermalrite's C12 Pro. So when comparing the B12 Extreme to these other fans, it does have a much higher DBA at all voltages. Just look at that line go up. Okay, when comparing the airflow, the B12 Extreme with no obstructions moves a lot of air when compared to these other fans. It can actually move more air at six volts than the NF F12 and the P12 do at 12 volts. But again, that is with no obstructions. Then in the mesh panel testing, things don't really change too much. All the fans do have a slight drop in FPM. Then in the covered panel testing, all the fans do have a pretty big hit to the FPM. But the B12 Extreme is still moving a lot of air at 10 and 12 volts. But with that DBA, I would hope so. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. And this is where things get pretty crazy. And that's because the B12 Extreme at six volts is matching or beating the Arctic P12 and the NF F12 when they're at 12 volts. So all the fans are noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if the fan doesn't get up to 34 dBA. With no obstructions, the B12 Extreme is pretty much in the middle of this chart, sitting between the Arctic P12 and the R12 from Thermalrite with an FPM of 340. Now with the mesh panel, the B12 Extreme is again pretty much in the middle of the chart with an FPM of 320. And finally with the covered panel, the B12 Extreme is now second from the top with an FPM of 162. So what do I think of the Thermalrite B12 Extreme? Now I guess for the majority of people, two words sum up this fan and that's Exterm Overkill. Now that's Extreme Overkill for those who didn't actually get the joke. Now I'm not saying this is a bad fan, it's just Extreme Overkill. Nobody needs a 52 dBA fan or something that can max out at 52 dBA. Now yes, I understand you don't necessarily need to have it maxing out, like even at six volts, it was matching pretty much dBA wise with the Arctic P12. But again, this is for industrial use. So this is to actually have in a workshop or whatever where you don't, you already have earbuds in or whatever, like things blocking noise, but you don't hear the computer or hear the fan in the computer or whatever. So the B12 Extreme should be used in industrial systems where noise isn't really an issue. And for everyone else looking for a really good CPU cooler or a fan to put behind a restrictive front panel, you should look towards the B12. Because the 34 dBA results should be the exact same for the B12 as they are for the B12 Extreme. Now I do see or have a slight second issue with these fans, and that's the availability. It's not so much with the fan itself, but it's the overall availability. They seem to be really hard to find, certainly in North America. It might be different in other places on the planet. But in North America, the Amazon.com is really the only place I'm finding them and everything is coming from Amazon.com and being shipped out. So if you're in Canada, you're paying US prices, so it's inflated. If you're in Australia, you're still getting it shipped from the US as far as I can tell. So yeah, availability on these things is not great right now at time of filming. So keep that in mind. Now I understand there are third-party sellers selling these things, but I saw one of them for like $65 please don't pay $65 for a white B12. It's just insane. Please don't do that. 
And that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to become a subscriber. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and that will give you access to all the charts from the, all the fans, all the coolers, and all the cases that I test. Uh, you might also want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.